everyone. Welcome back to Winance Wednesday. This is our weekly financial independence live stream show and podcast where we talk about all the ways we can transform our lives through our finances. And we do that, boing, boing, boing. <laughs> we do that by learning how to spend our money more intentionally, how to grow wealth by learning how to invest, all so that we can live more intentional, more fulfilling lives, the lives that we deserve. We are your hosts and personal finance educators, Stephanie and Marie. We are also two sisters on the path to financial independence. And if you are joining us here on YouTube, do us a favor and go ahead and click the like and subscribe button so that more people can find our content. We can move our videos up into the algorithm. And then likewise, if you are joining us from podcast land, well, hello, first of all. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the Wynance show, and then also leave us a five-star rating and review. If you find value and the content that we're providing to you week after week. Um, leaving a rating and review helps our podcast get found, found by other people who are also looking to transform their lives through their finances. So you might notice <laughs> we've got on our cute little headbands because this is our last episode before Christmas, before the holidays, our last episode of 2020. So we thought it'd be kind of cute and fun to put on our antlers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our funny little reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So we wanted to uh, have a little fun around our, our holiday end of season episode and talk yeah. about some of our favorite things. Our favorite These things. Nice little, you know, reindeer, bung, boingy headbands. Boing. Yours <laughs> bounce, which are very cute. Like you've got little springs. Mine don't, mine don't do that, but. Yeah, yours are glittery. <laughs> mine are very glittery. You're right about that. <laughs> Yeah, so exactly what Stephanie just said. Um, this is basically our recap episode for season two of Wine Ants Wednesday. Um, we wanted to go over some of our favorite tips and aha moments that we gain from this season, things that we think will help carry you into the new year, especially as we're doing goal planning, we're looking at our finances, hopefully reevaluating things and making a plan to be even more successful in the upcoming year. So um, we wanted to actually all of our episodes really true back to our mission, which is, of course, to help you spend more intentionally, to help you build wealth through investing, and of course, to help you and to help us learn to live more fulfilling, more intentional lives. So we grouped our recap based in those three principles. And so we wanted to start off first by talking about spending intentionally in the episodes that covered that topic. And so the first episode that we did that is episode four, which is tracking your expenses. And no, Stephanie, this is something very near and dear to your heart. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Um, you know, so in that episode, we broke down the difference between what is budgeting and what is tracking your expenses. And we had a really awesome graphic that we wanted to replay that again for you. So for those in podcast land, I apologize. You got to tune in to YouTube to see the graphic. But essentially, it breaks down the difference between budgeting and tracking. Budgeting is how you should spend your money. So all those categories that we love to plan and say, I'm only going to spend X in, in you know, my food category this month and Y in my other categories, whatever. Those That's kind of your wish list. That's what you want to how you want to spend your money, but not necessarily how you actually do it. Tracking your expenses means how you actually are spending your money. So when you're tracking your expenses, you're looking basically back at your history and saying, okay, I spent $100 at this shop, you know, last month, and I spent $300 on groceries, you know, on the same month, and, you know, $400 at wherever, you know, that, <laughs> that month too. So you're looking at how much you actually have spent. And the reason why this is important is because that is the first step to budgeting. You have right. no idea how much your budget budget should be, your budget categories should actually be until you know how much you really are spending. I mean, you mm -hmm. could say, I only want to spend $500 on rent or your mortgage, but your reality is your rent or your mortgage costs a certain amount of money. You need to know exactly how much that is. Now, granted, that's a fixed category. Most people know how much you're spending there, but that's the point is you need to know what are your fixed categories and what are your variable categories that flex from month to month? And how do you determine how much you really need to spend in those categories? Tracking your expenses, is the first way to get there. That's right. And when you're going over your expenses, something that's really important to do is to not shame yourself. When you look at those trends and you see, oh, I overspent in this category or I spent in a category that doesn't true back to my goals and to mm -hmm. maybe my values, just it's okay. What's in the past is in the past. The important thing is that you are looking at 
what those trends are. And then when you build that budget, you know where to focus your energy and your effort. Yeah. Um, the other thing is to focus on how you want to spend your money going forward and you build your budget around that. So don't get caught up in the past. Use the past to help you set your budget. But also something we talked about in episode four was to understand that there might be categories in which it's just very difficult to cut back in. And I think the one cat category for me was my grocery bill. I end up spending a lot more on groceries than I would prefer to do, but it brings me value. I like to eat good food. <laughs> we talk about that. Don't a we lot. all? <laughs> Don't we all? And, and I'm not eating filet mignon every night, but I like to have lots of different foods. I love fresh produce. My husband and I eat a ton of fruits and vegetables and that costs money and that's expensive, but that brings us value. And so what I do is instead of spending more money on Amazon or on Target or shoes or whatever the case is, I choose to spend a little bit more money in my grocery category. Yeah. And I think this actually brings us really well to the next one. And so the next thing in spending intentionally, in episode eight, we discussed why your small expenses can end up being your biggest expense. And during that episode, I laid it all on the on the table for you guys. <laughs> you I, I buried my my uh, big scarlet letter on my <laughs> shoulder for my, my eating out budget years ago. Um, you know, before I learned about financial independence and started really intentionally saving as well as intentionally spending. Mm -hmm. um, we ate out all the time and I looked back through my mint, you know, tracking expenses and I found my most expensive month and it was, we spent over $1,300 eating out one month, one month, just one. <laughs> like that is ridiculous. Like it, it's just, oh, oh my God. And the total the total amount was like over $2,000 between groceries and bars and restaurants and delivery food. Like, oh my God, I still think <laughs> about it. And I'm like, you know, if we had taken that money and put it in the stock market, where could we be today? But you know, know. you can't live in the past. You, you can't keep moving really forward. <laughs> you have to keep moving forward but and use it as a learning lesson. Exactly. It was very much a learning lesson. I tracked my expenses. I know exactly how much I spent. And now I know to never do that again, hopefully. You know, yeah. that's the whole point is learning from these lessons. It's not to to live in shame forever or to say, oh man, if only I hadn't spent that money and live in my my past. Like, I'm sorry, but wishing I had invested that money is not going to actually bring me money. So the key that's is right. to learn from that experience. And make sure that you don't do that again. Learn from your mistakes, move forward. That's move the key. On. <laughs> and that's a good segue into our last episode that covered off on um, spending intentionally. And that was our episode nine, our interview with um, Scott Henderson, who's the marketing manager of Cube Money. And if you didn't see that episode, um, just or it, it's been a while since you wa watched it or listened to it, um, Cube Money is basically a banking and digital envelopes app. So it ties your bank to your budget. And the remarkable thing about Cube Money is that it basically ties budgeting to real-time transactions. So when you go to the grocery store or you're in line at Target or you're wherever, and instead of taking your, well, you would take your card out, but you actually have to authorize that transaction and you have to pull that money out of a specific cube. So a lot of us use budgets and we might have a spreadsheet or we might have some other budgeting app that we use. But with Cube Money, you literally put your money into a, into a specific cube or envelope within your bank account. And that money is for that specific reason. So when you go to the grocery store, you pull that money out of your cube grocery or your grocery cube rather. So we are really excited about Cube Money. I've signed up for their lifetime membership. Um, it is on, you can actually use our discount right now. So if you are interested in um, signing up for Cube Money, you can use our, um, go to winancefi.com slash cube, Q-U-B-E, for those of you who are listening, and use our promo code winance25. This offer is only good through the end of the year, through 1231. So um, after, I guess, after January 1, I don't know if they're going to continue doing Doing lifetime memberships or not. Um, but certainly if you are interested in signing up, then we would love for you to get that discount because who doesn't want to save money? But <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's really going to help everybody who does sign up for it, um, spend their money more intentionally and budget their money more intentionally so that your money is reflected, your values are reflected rather in your money and your spending habits. 
Yeah. So, I mean, that was a really fun episode. It was actually our first uh, recorded episode, the one we hadn't done live. So yeah. it was it was an interesting experience for us. And also it was our first interview with someone. And yeah. I, I just thought it was such a great experience. It was such a great product. Um, and Scott was such a great person to talk to. I mean, he was he's part of the, the FI community. That's so, right. you know, we, we got to nerd out about FI stuff, too. <laughs> you know what? I, I learned a lot about that product because I'm one of those people that is like I, I mentioned in the inter or the episode i'm fee verse like i don't like paying yeah. fees for things that i quote think i can get for free but i did learn um how even though you're paying a fee for that service to use cube there's a lot of benefits to it that really basically give you more savings than you would actually spend on. And so sometimes you have to realize those things is that it's worth spending money on certain things. Now certainly it's it's your decision on whether you know using or spending on the, the membership fee for a cube is worth it or not, but they do also offer a free version. So you can try right. it out and see if it, you really like it, and if it works for you. Um, so I thought that was a, a really great option and it was really great speaking to Scott about that. Definitely. I totally agree. So go check out episode nine if you haven't already watched it. Um, and then once you figure out how to spend your money more intentionally, and hopefully you've got a little bit more money, you can now focus on growing and building wealth, which Stephanie and I talk primarily about. That is like our favorite thing um, to talk about. And we do that primarily for the two of us in our 401ks. And so mm -hmm. in episode two, we talked about why your 401k is one of the best ways to grow wealth. And we talked about ways that you actually can grow wealth in your 401k. Right. I mean, investing in my 401k, and, and I know the same for you, is one of the biggest reasons that we were able to grow our net worth to, you know, six figures, multiple six figures yeah. in just a matter of years. You know, yeah. I, I really, I say this all the time is when I started maxing out my 401k and my husband started maxing out his 401k, it was yeah. such a game changer in our in our savings and our long-term investment strategy and our long-term savings strategy like seriously it, it skyrocketed like you can see you know on that linear line in personal capital <laughs> or mint where your net worth's like you know just kind of tracking along tracking along and all of a sudden it's like zoop, it just flies yeah. up really, yeah you know, investing in your 401k is one of the best ways to do it and, and when we say 401k we mean any employer sponsored retirement yes. plan your 401k your 403b your 457b your tsp whatever your employer offers where you can invest a significant amount of money tax-free so you're mm -hmm. getting the tax advantage now um you know and then let the growth go tax-free so you don't have to worry about paying taxes until the future when you retire like seriously take advantage as much as you can of that yeah. Yeah. So definitely go back and rewatch episode two or re-listen to episode two because we go all into 401ks and how best to invest in them and why they are such a great vehicle for basically becoming a, a, a millionaire. Um, and Stephanie, in that episode, you talked about how in Q2 of this year, there were more 401k millionaires made than ever before in any period of time. And that was at the height of the pandemic. That was when the, yeah. the stock market was essentially crashing and we were losing 30% of our portfolio values at that time. Now, granted, we've been fortunate enough to recoup that because we are invested in um, index funds, which I know you're going to go over in just a second. But mm -hmm. for those of you who are interested in learning how to grow and build wealth in your 401ks, um, just a reminder that we have our free 401k guide. This is a step-by-step -step guide that shows you how to invest in your 401k. And Stephanie and I always say, this guide is what we wished we had when we were starting out in our careers when we were first presented with 401ks. But even if you are further along in your career and you might be, even even if you're fully maxing out your 401k, are you invested in the right things? We right. cover off on all of that stuff in our guide. And so you can go to our website, which is winancefi.com slash 401k. Make sure that K is lowercase. It's really annoying. I don't know why <laughs> you can't capitalize it, but winancefi.com slash 401k to download our 401k guide. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hopefully we can get the, the uppercase, lowercase thing working, but yes, definitely. It's yeah. such a great guide. Like we've, we've gotten so much great feedback from people about it. It literally is like one of the easiest things to, to go through and read and help figure out, you know, basically what, 
how to sign up for your 401k and, and how to read all the investment options and things. Um, another thing about that real quick is that even though we have this awesome guide, we also offer a workshop called Building Wealth in Your 401k. And we did our first workshop for that this year. And we're super excited to have upcoming workshops in 2021. We're still working on the schedule on that, but definitely you know, sign up for our email list at winancefi.com yeah. to be notified on when that schedule comes out. So that way you can sign up for those workshops. And really the difference is that you're going to get hands-on experience with us. You're going to get us being able to answer your questions, go through Q&A, and really going through all the nitty gritty details of your 401k options and answering all those questions. So definitely, you know, like I said, sign up for our email so you know exactly when those workshops are going to happen. I like it when you say nitty gritty because your reindeer go like... <laughs> nitty gritty. <laughs> go all weebly wobbly. <laughs> so cute. And so also in that workshop, you know, and in our 401k, we kind of touch upon this, but in episode five, we talked about index funds, which is our personal favorite fund option for, um, for our 401k and just also investments in general. And so the reason why we love investing in index funds is because they are simple and they are effective period, end of story. Um, and the reason why they are simple and, and, and effective is because when you are invested in an index fund that tracks either the S&P 500 or the total stock market, well, you are as diversified as you could possibly need to be. You're invested in at least 500 companies, right? And they are the top 500 companies in the country. If you're in a total stock market index fund, then you get the whole broad base index of all, all, the, companies. Of all the companies. <laughs> and so in episode five, we really go into why it's safe to invest in index funds. Now, granted, there is volatility in, in, in investing and there is risk in any form of investing, but index funds is truly one of the safest ways to invest. And also it is like a surefire way that you will always perform as well as the market is performing. So if the market is up, you're going to do great. You're going to be up. And if the market's down, well, the market's down. But one of the key things to understand about index fund investing is that the market always eventually goes up. And you can learn that in episode five when we show you our charts and graphs about how the stock market actually grows over time and has never, ever permanently stayed down. If it was, if it had, well, we wouldn't be here today, would we? None of us would be. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like people say the market always goes up and it does always go up eventually. That's eventually, the key. Remember, yeah. eventually. It doesn't you know, stay it stuck. It doesn't stay stuck. And also it's not about timing the market. I mean, that's the great thing about index funds is that you don't have to worry about, oh, the market's up today and down tomorrow. Just buy. Like I hear, I see so many people getting analysis paralysis and trying to figure out when's the best time to quote, jump in and, and just start investing. And it's like today, if today. not yesterday, and if not 10 years ago, then today is the best day. Because even if you buy high today and it goes down tomorrow, it will go up again. You know, yeah. if you're, again, if you're investing in these total stock market index funds or, or um, you know, S&P 500 index funds, don't worry about what's happening today or tomorrow or five days ago get invested, start it now, do what's right for you, get it done. <laughs> 100%. And so you don't just have to invest in your 401k, you can also invest in your HSA, which Stephanie, we call you the queen of HSAs. Um, I'm the queen and, of, of at Wynance of HSAs. I'm sure there's some guru out there who knows more than me, but I, don't know I, will, take, because I will take the honor and I will wear my reindeer crown. <laughs> yeah, that's proudly. your crown. Well, I don't know. I'm going to just say you are definitely one of the leading voices on HSAs. And I think that is evidenced by the fact that our two episodes about HSAs were our top two viewed episodes. At least um, episode six was our top viewed episode. So many people watched that episode and shared it because you went full soup to nuts into HSAs. And that was such a great um, interview with you. And I hope that people learned a lot about that. But why don't you share some of those like few tips about HSAs and why it's such a great retirement vehicle? Yeah, I mean, like where you said, the HSA episodes were were some of our most popular, and it's because there's so much information to be shared, especially information that people don't understand and realize. Um, in the first episode, episode six, we discussed um, basically the basics of HSAs and why they can be such great, you know, options for investments and savings. Um, and then the second episode, episode ten, we discussed really how to optimize your investment options in your HSA. So kind of to 
go over again the basics of an HSA and what what the advantages are. Um, an HSA is a triple tax advantage account. That means that the contributions that you put in are tax deductible today. So they save you taxes, including a uh, um, 7.65% FICA tax when you contribute through your employer payroll. So if your employer offers an HSA, it can be such a great uh, tax saving option to contribute as much as you can into that. Next, the money that you put into that account grows completely tax free. So any uh, dividends, any earnings and growth on those investments grows tax free. And then the last thing is you can pull that money out completely tax free for eligible expenses. So that's for, you know, medical expenses, for your deductibles, for your co-pays, for prescriptions. You know, um, what I, one of the things I mentioned in actually episode 10 was due to the CARES Act um, that mm. Congress passed this year uh, because of the pandemic, there are certain over-the-counter medications and over-the-counter items that were not previously covered by HSAs unless you had a prescription from your doctor. And that's things like feminine hygiene hygiene products and certain over-the-counter medications like Tylenol and Advil. So you can get your tampons and your Advil for your cramps, <laughs> you know, and write that off with your HSA. Those are eligible expenses this year. So there's a lot of options in terms of being able to get that money out tax free. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people are worried that they may not have enough medical expenses. But one of the great things about HSAs is that once it's in that account, it's your money and you keep it forever, you know, until the day you die. And then that can get passed on to whoever you leave it to your beneficiaries. Um, but hopefully you're able to use that money, you know, before that day comes. Uh, but, you know, I think there's uh, important things to understand about HSAs. You have to have a high deductible health care plan mm -hmm. to be able to contribute to an HSA. Um, you know, they're not, and HSAs aren't necessarily going to be for everyone. And so it's important to determine if that high deductible health care plan is worth it compared to getting the maybe slightly um, more expensive uh, full full plan and PPO with a lower deductible. So it really yeah. just depends. So episode six, we go into that really well in terms of um, kind of giving some examples of the typical types of people who will uh, do well contributing to HSAs and participating in those high deductible plans. Uh, some of the things that I really liked that we discussed in episode 11, I'm sorry, episode 10 uh, about HSAs in terms of like leveling up your investing on the HSA side is that you can open your own self-directed HSA even if your employer offers one. So if your employer has an HSA option or an HSA account, you can open your own and transfer that money over um, using a trustee to trustee transfer, which means that money goes directly from the one HSA company or bank to the other HSA company or bank or provider. Mm -hmm. um, and it never touches your hands. So as long as it's in a trustee to trustee transfer, you can do unlimited transfers. And the great thing about that is one, if your employer or your employer's HSA has a certain cash limit that you have to have before you can start investing. Like my employer has a thousand dollar cash requirement before I can start investing. By mm -hmm. doing a self-directed HSA in parallel to my employer HSA, I can start contributing immediately doing that trustee to trustee transfer. So all that money that I'm contributing through my payroll and that my employer is matching or contributing as well, I can move over to my own personal HSA and start you know, investing that money immediately. Um, yeah. One of the other reasons is that if your investment options with your employer's HSA are not good, you might have high fees or fees in general that you just don't want to pay. You might have, um, you know, bad investment options. So taking control back through your own self-directed HSA gives you that power to decide when you want to invest and how much and in what type of funds you want to do that. Um, the last thing I'll mention about HSAs real quick is that basically after age 65, they could be treated as traditional IRAs. So yeah. if you are saving in your HSA and you're saving tons and tons of money each year, and then you get to age 65 and you're like, well, I just don't have that many medical expenses because I've been relatively healthy, which is also kudos to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use that money essentially as a traditional IRA after that. You can pull that money out. It won't be tax-free. You will pay tax on the withdrawals, but one, it doesn't have to be for an eligible medical expense. It can be for any reason that you have. And two, you'll only pay your tax income rate at that time. So whatever income yeah. rate you're paying at 65 plus is the income rate that you'll be paying for pulling that money out. So really, it just becomes another in, um, retirement account at that point. So go back, please rewatch those episodes, episode six and 10. Again, yeah. I, there was so much great information in there. You know, I, hopefully I did the summary justice because there was a lot more in there too that we discussed. And, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of people got a lot of uh, benefit from those. 
I think so too. And Stephanie, I know you've been very uh, like, especially in like the Facebook groups that we're in the personal finance, Facebook groups that we're in, you've been answering so many people's questions about HSAs, about their specific circumstances. So um, if you have questions about HSAs, you know, by the time this episode airs, um, you, it might still be open enrollment for you. So feel free to send us a DM on Instagram or on Facebook. You can find us at Wine Ants um, on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and Stephanie would be happy to, I'm, I'm offering you up stuff, but I know oh, I, I'm happy to answer questions. About I know you <laughs> are. I know you are. Cause you love that stuff. And you. you know, that's ultimately why we do Wine Ants is to help our community out anyway. So, um, so yeah, definitely go back and listen to episodes six and 10 um, if you want to learn more about HSAs. Um, and then, you know, the whole reason that we learn to spend intentionally and we learn to grow and build wealth is ultimately so that we can live more fulfilling lives, live more intentionally and live the lives that we deserve. And so, you know, Stephanie and I, we always talk about that. It's not about the money. It's about our lives and about the, like a purpose-driven life, a purpose-filled life. And so in episode three, you know, we talked about how to live intentionally through financial independence. Now, obviously you all know that Stephanie and I are part of the financial independence community and that there's this other half of financial independence, which is called retire early, which makes it the FIRE community. Whether you are planning to retire early or not, there's no reason to not pursue financial independence. Um, and so in episode three, we talk specifically about why you should consider pursuing financial independence. Chief amongst them is financial security and health security. You never know, especially 2020, let that be an, a, a wake up call to us all. Oh, yeah. We, you know, your employment, your job, whatever the case is, it is not a sure thing is even as certain as you might feel about it. It is not a sure thing. And also your health is not a sure thing either. There were plenty of people who ended up contracting COVID. And unfortunately, a lot of those people, not a lot, but a lot of people ended up dying and they probably were in really great health. People don't know if they have a quote pre-existing condition, right? I mean, we could be sitting here with pre-existing conditions and have no idea about them. And so mm -hmm. pursuing financial independence helps give you security for if you part ways with your job, especially unexpectedly, or if you can't physically work because you're sick or because something else happens. Maybe you also need to take care of a loved one who might who might be sick. So living intentionally is about being intentional about your finances and saving money so that you can live the life that you want to be living. And so you have freedom of choice. And that was another um, thing that we talked about was just having choice in your life. Financial independence gives you choice. And when you are intentional about how you're spending your money and what you were doing with your time, you get to have more choice in your life. Yes. I mean, it's all about that, that freedom, you know, of, choosing how you want to live and not being, you know, stuck to whatever paycheck that you need to have you know, your, your basic living yeah. expenses paid. You know, it's all about that flexibility to say, you know, I, I no longer enjoy this thing that I'm doing. I want to go do something else that's going to fulfill me and, and, you know, that I have passion for and gives me purpose and achieving financial independence absolutely helps that. I mean, and then, but even if you don't, if you set an FI number yeah. and you get 50% way there, then you're 50% better than you were before. You know, yeah. I always say that I'm like, if you set a goal to save a million dollars and you only get halfway there, you still got half a million dollars. Yes. Like, I wish I had that problem. You know? Yes, a hundred percent. And it is an unfortunate reality, but in this country where the majority of Americans couldn't afford, what is it? A $400 emergency, yeah. $800 emergency. Even if you don't get to your FI number, you are still better off because you chose saving and investing and spending intentionally and growing wealth over, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. And you chose to give yourself a better future than you would have had if you had not been saving that money, if you had not been investing. So I just, I've never heard an argument as to why somebody should not pursue financial independence. And I know in a lot of cases it could be, well, I want to pursue it, but I'm paying off debt or I want to pursue it, but I don't make a lot of income. And I would just say to that, you know, Stephanie and I want to cover off on those topics more in upcoming seasons, but there is a wealth of information, free information 
on the internet <laughs> that will help you with whatever circumstance you are in. There is somebody out there, there's a blogger, a podcaster, a YouTube channel, whatever the case is, who's got information that can help you get on the right path with your finances. So no matter what stage you're in, you will not always be there. The most important thing is that you look for those resources, you learn more about how to take control of your finances, you get on stable ground. And then once you get on that stable ground, the world is your oyster. You will be able to pursue and achieve financial independence. I truly believe that. Right. And I mean, to be honest, paying off debt is part of going on the financial independence path. Yeah, I mean, really, uh, if you think about it, Retirement in general, even traditional retirement at 60 or 70 or however old you are when you retire is financial independence. The whole point is to stop working at some point and be able to live yeah. off your savings. That is called yeah. financial independence. You now it's also called, you know, standard traditional retirement, but it's a version of financial independence. And so even if you are in, you know, tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of debt or student loans or, or whatnot, paying those off is your first step to financial independence, because I would hope so that at some point you would plan to have those all paid off and then also want to continue saving. Now you might not be fire, meaning financial independence and retire early. You might be on the path for traditional retirement, but eventually at some point you could reach that threshold where you're no longer in the negative and in debt. And instead you're growing and you're developing wealth. So really growing wealth, it's not just about, you know, investing everything and, and not being able to, to, to save anything for the future. It's about paying off that debt so that you can grow yeah. your wealth and then learning now while you're in that debt phase. So when you get to point zero, you know how to succeed and how to get your net worth to grow. Learn now yeah. while you're in debt, instead of waiting until you're out of debt and going, okay, well now what's next, you know, yeah. get yourself prepared. Yes. A hundred percent. And I know a lot of people who are pursuing financial independence while paying off debt, they use FI as like their motivating factor mm -hmm. for paying off debt. Um, there's a woman on Instagram, her name, or she goes by the handle Flynanced, and she has a really great story. I, I love her so much. I'm like her biggest fan girl. She doesn't even know it, but she's so great. But she talks about paying off debt. She was, you know, former shopaholic, spending money on all this, that, and the other. And I don't know if she still lives in New York, but she did live in New York at some point. And of course, you know, New York lifestyle and expenses can definitely mm -hmm. get up there. Um, and so she talks about paying off debt and using financial independence as her motivator to pay off her debt. So um, there are ways to do it. And there are plenty of free resources all across the, the interwebs and the, you know, everywhere. I keep saying interwebs, but there are. It's just Internet. Internet. <laughs> Anyways, there are resources out there and the pursuit of financial independence is really the pursuit of freedom and choice in your life. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it is also about time ownership. And that was what we covered off in, in episode 11. We talked about time ownership, who owns your time and how the financial independence of fire movement is not actually about money at the end of the day. It's actually about owning your time. Frankly, it's about buying your time back. And so mm -hmm. we covered off on this episode. I think this, this is a topic I love, love, love talking about because it really does get to the root of passion and purpose, what you actually want to be doing with your time and how you actually want to be spending your time. Um, and we did kind of touch upon that in episode three, but we did a deep dive of it in episode 11. And sort of the net outcome of that um, episode was don't wait until this magical number appears in your bank account because exactly what Stephanie said, you know, the, you, even if you get halfway there, that is an incredible thing. Now that might mean if you only get halfway there that you do have to end up working towards to traditional retirement age, or maybe you get to retire at 55 instead of 65, whatever the case is, you will still be buying back your time. And it is important to know that you are not retiring from something, but you are retiring to something. Yes. And when you are ex when you are crystal clear about your goal, about what you want your life to look like, it is the biggest motivating factor to get your finances in order. It is your biggest motivating factor to potentially pursue multiple income streams. It is your biggest motivating factor to understand how best to invest your money and grow wealth because you know at the end of the day, you have something amazing that's lined up for you. But you don't have to wait until that time comes. Nope. You can live your best FI life now. And we talked about that in episode 11. 
I personally create created a morning routine because I wanted more time in my day that was just for me. I use that time to work out, to journal, to meditate, and to frankly work on my businesses. I love working on my businesses. Um, I love working on wine ants. I love working on my calligraphy business. And I use that time in my day to do that because I know during the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and sometimes even more, you know, I have a job. I have to trade my time for money. And so giving myself that extra time in the day helps me feel more fulfilled in my life and helps me feel like I'm living my best FI life now. Yes. And one of the things I said, I remember, I think it was towards the end of the episode was uh, I, I always say that people always have money for the things they want yeah. to do. Like the, the things yeah. they really want to do. They want to go out, they want to go to happy hour at the bars with their friends. They always didn't have money for that, but they don't have money for the things that they probably should be <laughs> spending their money on. You know, people always have like, it's the same thing with time. People always have times for the things they really want to do. If you want to work out regularly, you figure out a way to do it. You wake up early, you go to sleep a little bit later, you forego, you know, watching that new show on Netflix for an hour, or maybe work out while you're, you know, watching that new show on Netflix for an hour. You know, you figure out a way to fit it into your schedule. And that's what, that's exactly what I did in terms of um, my fitness goals and, and health and working out two, just about two years ago, actually just over two years ago. Uh-huh, congrats to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I started working out regularly and I knew that I'm the type of person that I need to get it done in the morning. Otherwise I'm not going to get it done. Like by eight o'clock at night, I'm, I'm just done for the day. Like, don't ask me to do anything. So I was yeah. like, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it early. And I started waking up an hour early. Now I actually have to wake up like two hours early. Cause my, my workouts have extended. Like I used to just do 20 minute workouts when I started. And now if I get a 45 minute workout in, I'm like, man, I probably could have gone a little bit longer, but I just don't have the time right now to yeah. do a longer workout. But that's the thing is you figure it out and eventually it just becomes your part of your life and your schedule. And so, you know, if there's things that you want to do, it, you know, in your quote, postify life, you know, once you have all the time and freedom in the world to, to do whatever activity, why not start some version of it now? If you can't start all of it or, or everything that you want to do for that, that thing now, start some version of it. If you want to yeah. volunteer more, there's nothing stopping you from volunteering now. You know, I, I actually just did a, yeah. um, a, a panel for a for a high school. It was a teacher who reached out who needed um, some panelists to to join her her um, discussion with her students, her high school students about women in technology or just even just careers in technology. But she was looking for um, some more females to speak on her panel, and I volunteered myself. And it was literally like that morning she was asking people, and by like noon I was like, okay, I'll do it, you know. And at first I was like, man, well if I'm going to be doing that, I should be like. I should be, you know, doing other work. I should be doing wine dance work. I should be cooking dinner or cleaning my house or whatever. And then like, you know what? It's something that I've been wanting to do. I want to volunteer yes. more. It's, it's a topic I can easily talk about. I live it every day. I am a woman in technology, you know? Yeah. So it's an easy topic for me to talk about and it helps so many people. And oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Like mm -hmm. I was literally like, can I just be a panelist for like full time? Can I make that a job? Because it was so much fun, you know? And so like, that's the thing is, you will be surprised at how much you enjoy doing those things that you want to quote yeah. do in the future, doing them now. It will bring yes. you so much more fulfillment. And now I know, like, I love doing those things. I love like talking to young people about, you know, possible careers in, in technology and, and my industry and, and my specific career in, in software testing. There's, it's one of those careers that like, some people know exist, but a lot of people don't even really think about it. They just think that yeah. somebody coded something and it magically all worked on its own. It does not. You need someone like me to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, well, there's automation, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that you found time in your day to do something that you ended up finding out you love. And now this might, you know, open you up to new opportunities where you get to volunteer more of your time and speak on more panels and help other people, um, you know, find careers in technology and understand, especially helping other women, other people of color, you know, determine if they want to have a career in technology. And you got to do that today versus waiting until you hit your magical FI number to start volunteering and spending your time doing something like that. 
Exactly. I mean, you never know where your passion might lie. I mean, seriously, five years ago, if you had been like Marie and Stephanie, you're going to be doing a weekly live stream talking about investing and, you know, index funds and spending intentionally, which we would have been like, what does that even mean? You know, like we seriously, you would be like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. You wouldn't see you talking about <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> now look at us, we got reindeer horns on our head. We're talking about money and spending intentionally and living intentionally and all the things that are going to help you build wealth <laughs> like seriously yeah. who knows what the future is going to bring for you and being open to these opportunities is just it's only going to help you i mean there's really no downside to it learn as much as you can i mean if nothing else that we we talk to you about and that you you take away from what we're talking about this whole evening and this whole season just really learn as much as you can it's not going to hurt you you know maybe you decide ah it's not for me it's not the time fine, then that's totally your choice. But you, I think if most people think about things, the first time you hear about something, you tend to kind of write it off and go, Ugh, I don't know, that's, that's not for me, I can't do that. And then mm -hmm. maybe the second time you're like, eh, that's kind of interesting. Or you meet someone or one of your friends starts doing something and it's working for them. And you're like, okay, well, if it worked for them, maybe it could work for me. And by like the second or third time around, you jump in it and you're like, hey, it's not as bad as I thought it was. You know, so yeah. yes, the first time you hear things that we talk about, it might be a little confusing or, you know, it's it's a new concept that you hadn't really thought about for, you know, before. Give it a chance, you know, listen to the episodes again, rewatch them again, and maybe you'll pick up something the next time around. Because I know, like, you know, we've talked about this before. It took me a few months before Marie was like, oh, you know what financial independence now? You mean that thing I told you about like six months ago? <laughs> <laughs> like it takes me a couple times to like hear something before I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a chance or let me like research it some more. Cause you know, yeah. type A's have to research everything down to like this, the, the lowest <laughs> level of ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. So true. Well, I, I know we had a great time this season, you know, talking about all of these topics and most importantly, yeah, Stephanie and I could talk about all this stuff till we're blue in the face, but the reason why we do it is for you because we want to teach you and talk to you about all the things that we've learned along the way, the things that we wish we had known 10, 15 years ago. And so, you know, we've talked about, you can't live in the past. You kind of have to focus in the future, but if we, once you know better, you do better. And so that's why Stephanie and I do Wynance. That's why we do Wynance Wednesday. And so if you are finding value from our content, a couple things you can do for us is that you can leave a comment below. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe and like so you can get notified about our videos when new ones come out. If you're listening um, to the podcast, leave us a five-star rating and review because that really does help other people find our content. And we hope that you'll think of that as sort of like a way to leave us a tip. You know, if you think Marie and Stephanie did a great job and I learned something today, I'm going to leave them a tip. Leaving a rating and review or subscribing is a great way to do that. And so... Um, this was such a fun season for us. I, you know, we love engaging with you week after week. Um, and we are taking a break for the rest of the year, but we will be back with new episodes in the new year. In the meantime, we're going to have new blog posts going up. Stephanie was like a little writing fiend <laughs> over the weekend um, and drafted a bunch of new blog posts. So we're going to have new content on our website. So you won't have to miss us because we'll still be active on our website. Of course, you can catch us on Instagram and Facebook. You can always slide into our DMs. You can shoot <laughs> us an email at info at ynancefi.com. And make sure you sign up for our emails. Um, you can go to ynancefi.com to subscribe to our emails. You'll get our 401k guide for free. Um, and you'll get weekly emails from us with all of our great content, blog posts, podcasts, other tips, you name it. You'll learn about our upcoming workshops and it's, you know what? I'm so excited for the new year. I'm so excited for you all for the new year because we are going to soar in 2021. I truly believe that. And I want yeah. the best for you guys. I know Stephanie feels the same exact way. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what 2021 brings us. I mean, mm -hmm. I will say 2020 has been a bit of a show, if you will. <laughs> yeah, a little calls down 2020. on 2020. <laughs> but look at what we've done. You know, 2020 has been a great year in terms of where finance has gone, or finance, finance and finance <laughs> have gone to. And I'm, I am True. very excited to see, you know, just how we soar in 2021 and as well as everyone else. You know, I, I think there's, there's good things ahead of us. Yeah, absolutely. And so from 
us and the Wine Ants family, to all of you, we hope you have a happy and safe holiday season. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Solstice, whatever you celebrate. <laughs> happy Festivus. Happy <laughs> Festivus. <laughs> whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, we hope that you have a wonderful end of 2020 and ring in the new year um, with a lot of hope and a lot of wealth building to come in 2021. That is for sure. So thank you so much for joining us and we will see you in 2021, everyone. All right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>